want to say a bit about rare heritage or heirloom apples. There is so much to say. I do encourage people to, if you can and if you want to, to grow a rare uh, fruit for a number of reasons. A, uh, history, B, genetics and uh, C, because these fruits do have some benefits. But be careful. Uh, don't get drawn in uh, too heavy. Um, if you're going to just plant two or three apples in your garden, then you want to give a regular, steady, reliable producing uh, varieties on the whole. If you're going to plant them five or six, uh, then probably uh, there is a good reason to um, choose at least one that's rare. Uh, but you, you have to make that choice. I, I'm not going to tell you what choice to make. I've made some good choices, I've made some less good choices based on books. Uh, quick whiz through some rare varieties. This is Huysgen's Golden Runette. It's an old-fashioned Dutch apple. Uh, I bought it on recommendation from a book which I read. I'll save it about books later. It's a good apple. It's got an unusual texture. Uh, it's a good flavour. It's a long keeper and it's not golden. It's red. So why do they call it Huysgen's Golden Runette? I don't know. Um, this is Adam's Pear Main. This is another old apple. Um, this is, has been grown for more than 200 years. It's a pear-shaped apple. Uh, it's got quite good disease resistance and a good flavour and it's a long keeper. It tends to make it very long spindly uh, growth, but here that doesn't really matter very much. This is May Queen, and all these apples by the way we had never tasted them uh, before we tasted our own from the planting because they're unobtainable. Uh, normally it would be much bigger than this, so it didn't get thinned enough uh, in a drought year. The May Queen, very crunchy, very long keeping, uh, said the savour of nuts when it's fully ripe, whether it does or not, it's a matter of opinion. Here's another Adam's Pear Main. And this is a marvellous apple, Pitmarston Pineapple, this is called. This is the biggest they ever get, and you've got to thin them quite hard to get them to grow as big as this. It's not a very heavy or reliable cropper. Uh, there's only one thing in its favour. It's got a wonderful taste. Uh, it really does taste of pineapples when it's fully ripe. Lovely apple. Quite a few people are in the know say this is their favourite apple. Um, so this is the section of the orchard where we plant uh, our rarer fruits. Here's another Pitmarston pineapple. Uh, I won't bother to tell you what those are. Those are rare varieties. I haven't got any fruit on them at the moment. This is um, uh, St Edmund's Pippin, otherwise known as St Edmund's Russet. Uh, again, it's a small apple. It tend to be a bit bigger than this sometimes. It's a very nice apple, very richly flavoured and ripe quite early in the year compared to um, uh, many other russets. That's a very quick whiz through. Uh, if you want more information about that, I cannot recommend a better book than uh, Rosie Saunders, uh, The Apple Book. Only £12.50 from Amazon uh, on a special pre-release offer at the moment. I don't get any money for this, I'm just you know, sharing good news. Uh, but anyway, uh, rare heritage apples. Yeah, we got hooked by the bug. Uh, the danger is uh, you start reading the descriptions of these apples in the old books, you get a bit, if you're that way inclined, you get very excited and you end up planting too many apples, you plant them too close together and after a while you think hey this is a bit weird and uh, you may not like the flavour of some of them and of course you can't taste them before you plant them. Uh, more people who live near us can than used to be the case and uh, it's a good thing to you know grow a few if you can if you've got an orchard of five or ten fruits in your garden to tr try to plant one thing that's rare and unusual um, but don't, uh, don't um, completely go overboard okay. Uh, so that's just a little tiny, tiny, tiny introduction to some of the rare heritage apples that we grow. Um, but, uh, you know, if you do some exploration and um, study and go to a few tastings where you live, uh, you'll be able to find some of the apples. And believe me, some of these apples are a hop, a skip and a jump away from extinction. I was reading through uh, one of the oldest books I, I have um, that I bought new, um, Lawrence Hill's um, The Good Fruit Guide, our copy is long out of print, our copy is very tattered, and uh, in it he said um, uh, of certain varieties, oh this is available from one or two specialist nurseries, and I'm thinking yeah for that one or two read one, uh, because the number one um, nursery that uh, was providing rare fruits uh, when that book was written some 25 years ago was Scott's Nurseries of Marriott, and they're gone and they ain't coming back. So uh, the genetics of these apples is important and uh, the best way, uh, as with rare breed animals, the best way to um, keep them alive is to eat them.
because the more people there are who, who know what a, a Ribston Pippin or a, a Sturmer Pippin or a Rosemary Russet tastes like and value it and tell their friends about it uh, and grow a tree and perhaps pass a few on to friends, uh, the better chance those um, rare and precious um, uh, genetic uh, apples uh, I've got of surviving. Don't trust the government to do it, uh, do something yourself if you can.